So in today's episode, we're going to show you a few interesting tips on how to fix skirting board again without fixings, and also a couple of tips of how to get the perfect paint finish by doing a little shadow gap where the skirting meets the flooring. So stay tuned for the end of that where I show you that tip. Okay, so we're just going to fit a piece of skirting to return around here. Now, I've already got the flat bit of skirting here. I don't typically ever do a mitre joint on an internal corner. Instead, I normally do a coping joint, which you can see here. This basically follows the profile of the skirting it's gonna go into. So, let's show you a bit of off cut here. You can see how this can basically sandwich a meter. Now the reason you do a cope rather than a mitre on the internal is that the wall, this angle might not be 45 degrees and also the wall might not be um, at 90 degrees um, on either of these planes. So by doing the coping you can get around both those issues. And you can see that that nicely tucks into it. So that's that side. So we've got a big gap that we need to overcome there, which we'll show you how to do that later. So I've got my little angled return here. So first thing I normally like to do is actually just glue these together with my favorite um, activator glue. So there we glue, I'm using the thick black again. I normally try to keep it towards the back so it doesn't come through in the actual front of the joint. That's great. Hold for 10 seconds. Hold for it. At least then. Maybe 15. How long has it been? Okay. So that's that set. Now, let's give this a little sand um, and then we'll go into the next step. So, this wall here, which has been skimmed, it's been nicely painted and sanded. So it looks perfectly flat, but if I hold the spirit level up here, so it's touching the end here, it's touching the wall here. In the middle, we've probably got a five mil gap in the middle, and at the end, a four mil gap. So I'm gonna show you a tip of how I glue skirting with such big problems in the wall while still not using a fixing, which are always a pain to fill and hide later. So the glue I'm using is a Soodle Gripple solvent-based high-strength grab adhesive. So not too expensive, and it is really nice and strong. And also, if you know what this is, I got this from Etsy, which if you ever had dried out ends, it's basically just a little rubber small sleeve which you can just put over the top. Forms a nice um, airtight seal, very handy. So, give it a nice, good, thick bead. I'm gonna go quite thick on this just because of how bad the wall is. And then I'll do a little bit thinner towards here. on. So I'm going to use a selection of clamps to basically squeeze this against the wall to keep solid pressure on it. And then still 
we'll do it in the worst point. That's how you glue skirting to a wavy wall without having to drill and do fixings in the skirting itself. So probably leave that for a good few hours. It's a good assault course for the evening. Yeah, just don't uh, don't trip on that. So we're on our next step um, in seeking the perfect skirting board fit. So we now need to cork the top line. Obviously no wall is perfectly straight, so we've still got some gaps. Some of it's flush, probably at worst, it's only probably about a mil, mil and a half, so not too bad. So ordinarily, you would get your cork gun and cork, like such, quite a small line. Take your finger and rub it. Now, what you actually get here though, if you try to zoom in, is because you rub it, you get a very, this smudges out and you get a thin film of cork that effectively spreads up the wall, basically up to that line there. And it fills the kind of micro porousness in the paint. And if you look up close, maybe not so much in the skirting, but high up maybe on some architrave, you can see that reflect differently and it's quite obvious that you've got a thick layer there. So I don't like to do that. So I'm just going to rub this out now. So that cork is gone. So instead what I like to do, which is a bit of a faff, a bit of extra effort, is if we go over to this side now. So what I like to do is tape this first. Now this doesn't mean you're going to have to tape twice because we're going to tape here. I'm going to cork it, which I'll show you now. Um, Let's do this side first. Let's do a line around here as well. Now this, you don't need to look to worry too much about doing a fine line. And now I've basically set the tape about half a mil up from the actual skirting line. Um, so now I can rub this and I don't need to worry about that squeezing out. So in fact that, if you zoom in on the tape you can actually see better what I was probably poorly describing on the other side because now you can see that white film that's spread up the tape so that's showing it a bit more obviously of what it would do on the wall and now we're completely avoiding that whilst we're getting a nice line so now take the tape off So if you look close now, we'll just do a final smoothing out. You can see how pretty much invisible that line is now, and it's nicely filled the crack very tightly. We've got a pretty much flawless fill with the cork there. So we're coming on to the final bit of skirting for this zone, um, of which we've hit a bit of a normal problem. So this is another tip as to how I would overcome it. So if we put a square up, against the skirting, which you should normally do when you're checking it. So that is nice and square with the floor, nice and square with the floor. I'd probably accept about a millimeter difference at most. Come around to this side, we're getting on for a three mil gap. You can see a rock there. Now that's quite common based on how people often, when you're plastering, you get a bit of a kind of a hockey stick towards the bottom. So. Now you could overcome that by doing a compound cut. It's a bit of a faff and it's not actually square, so I just hold this up here. So I already cut the angle, so you can see here this gap here because this piece of skirting is kicking out at the bottom. So what I do to overcome that is just... Did you move my tool? The hammer? Right, let's go get that. So as an exaggeration as to what I would do if I did have a big lump at the bottom, because you've got quite a big bit of skirting, often don't be afraid just to you know, cut a big bit of the plaster off the bottom 
if it is in the way. Much easier than alternative, which would be if you're trying to have your skirting, you'll just end up with a lot more cork at the bottom, at the top, sorry. So it's a lot easier just to chop off the bit of the bottom of the plaster. Anyway, that's not a problem that bit. So I'm just going to basically go an oldish wood chisel, so it's still a little bit sharp. It's going to shave off pop a area down here. Quite bad at the bottom. So we're now good here, good there. Perfect there. So we're much better here. Good at the back. Yeah, we've got a fraction of gap at the at the top, but that is much better for angle now. So that only takes a few seconds and much better than trying to do a compound angle cut, you're fighting the corner, you're having to cork all around it. Um, so open worth checking with the square first. And if there's some obvious bits or a small line of the plaster you can chop off the bottom, it will make it a lot better and your cork line at the top a lot smaller. So I'll get this glued up. So final couple of tips. Um, this one I've not done before, but I think it is going to be extremely helpful for painting and gives a slightly better finish overall. So this is the last bit of skirting I've got, which is going to go down here, like that. So if I just come up and show you here. So I've got a piece of MDF here that is representing the flooring. Imagine how we're going to paint that. Very hard to do so. You need to tape extremely tight to the join here. You never really get a perfect finish. Some people silicon that joint, which over time look, can look a bit grubby. So what I've decided to do instead, and often you often end up getting slight gaps anyway because the floor is never perfect. So if I just show you what I've done, I've done this on all the other pieces of skirting. If you come and look down here now, you can see I've got a nice even shadow gap all the way along the bottom of that edge. To do that, I just put a very slight chamfer all the way across the bottom of this to create that shadow gap. And now what I can do, I can either use a bit of paper just to protect while I paint. I can basically easily slip that bit of paper underneath that chamfer, because that chamfer effectively goes in about a mil or two. And now I can get a perfect paint finish without getting any paint on the oak floor. And I get a nice even finish. And that shadow gap will help cover up any natural gaps that are on the flooring anyway. So I've done that everywhere, and I think that will really help when I come to paint it and paint it in the future as well. Second thing, which has been a series of many tips of how to not use fixings. So I think I mentioned before that the very last row of the flooring, especially if it's a narrower rip, can be quite springy. So I obviously want to basically pin that down with the skirting in situ, but I need to basically hold that um, flooring down while the glue sets. So what I'm going to do is use another telescopic pearl I have. So I've used these, often use these for fitting plasterboard on the ceiling, but basically find any way to clamp the floor down. So I've got a little bit of a handy spot here. So basically all I'm going to do is compress the flooring against this gap up here. So now that flooring, nice and tight to the floor now, and basically I can glue this in, and once that glue's gone off, it will firmly lock that position down and won't get any springiness left in that floor. So I'll glue that, that's nice and tight. Obviously make sure you protect any paint to finishes. Alternative here obviously would have been had to um, drill and screw this into the wall while pressing that down, but 
the time it saves just by if you've got anything like this or finding a way to clamp it down it's a lot quicker overall than filling sanding prepping that hole after it's been screwed it never gives a perfect finish either okay hopefully you enjoyed this video nothing revolutionary about fitting skirting boards but in order to achieve the perfect paint finish hopefully everyone's learned a few tips and to be able to do that so if you like what you've seen um, please like it and subscribe and if you've got any questions post in the comments below